of Lord Jesus. Jesus prayed daily. And Jesus prayed like this. Early in the morning, even before it is uh, sun rose, Lord Jesus went to a desolate place and he prayed. Gospel of Mark chapter 1 verse 35 says that. Early in the morning before sun rose, he woke up to pray. Before he chose his disciples, 12 of them, he prayed all night. He prayed. It, it talked about the length of prayer, but the content of the prayer is not mentioned there. And scripture says oftentimes in his busy ministry that he would go aside. Luke chapter 5 verse 16 says that he would go to desolate places and then he would pray. We see what he prayed. Only two prayers of Lord Jesus are mentioned a little bit in detail. One is prayer in Garden of Gethsemane. And then we know that prayer. Anybody tell me what is the prayer of Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus prayed? Follow out on all Japot Sunday. Um, if it is your will, let this cup pass by. If it not my will, but your will be done. And he prayed the same prayer three times. And then there is one prayer right before he went before the cross. And he prayed that as the elaborate prayer. And that prayer is recorded for us in John chapter 17. I want you to look at that, please. Gospel of John, chapter 17, quickly. And then, that they all may be one, verse 21, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they may be one in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Verse 23, I in them, and you in me, that they may be perfectly one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and loved me even as you have loved me me. What is the prayer of Lord Jesus? Aina Silva ekke mundu Yesu Prabhu chesina prarthana saram shavento telisa? Nalu matil gurtu bet kondi. Remember these four words. Restore the glory that I had with you in the beginning. That is the first request of Jesus. Nito naku kaligina mahima tirigi na kivamani Yesu Prabhu du tu nadu. The second request Jesus made is this. Lord, I have finished the work that you have assigned me and glorified you on the face of the earth. The third request that the Lord made is this. Lord, I'm, Father, I'm coming to you. I'm praying that you may keep these disciples of mine. Keep them from all evil. That is the prayer of Jesus. Tandri ne niyodha kostu nanu, ee naa shishu lanu, nivu ee dushtunu nunchi kaapada mani prarthin jesed isi prabhu. And the fourth and most important request that Jesus prayed in this last prayer is this. Let them be one even as we are one. Tandri kumarudu ekamga yala unnaro, vilu kuda aikyata khaligi undalani yesu prabhu prarthin jesed. The prayer of Lord Jesus is that the disciples may be one. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the afternoon message from the Lord for us. The Lord wants every family to be one. May all our families be one in Jesus' name. Let there be no division. Amen. The church may be one. Let there be no division in Jesus' name. Gattika Amen Japani. Amen. That the disciples, the universal church may be one and let there be no division in Jesus' name. Then why is there a problem in whole of Christendom? In Christendom, the families have division. Two brothers cannot talk to each other. Two sisters cannot talk to each other. Two friends cannot talk to each other. And churches divide for no reason. Why is there a problem? Why is not the prayer of Lord Jesus not being answered? You might think, no, Jesus' prayer definitely will be answered. The Lord, the content of Jesus' prayer is this, that they may become one. Then what is the root of all issues? Samastha samasyalaku ee mula vento telusa. The root of all problems is self. 
That is the reason why families are being divided. Brothers are divided. Sisters are divided. If there's a property problem, two brothers are divided from. If there is an ego problem, two sisters are divided from each other. When the Lord prayed that there should be oneness in every family. Lord prayed that there should be oneness in the church. The Lord prayed that there is oneness on all the Christendom. May the Lord take away that self. That old sinful carnal nature may be crucified. That we may become one. Do you want to say amen? If we have that desire. God's plan for your family is that you may be perfectly be one. That there be no division. God's plan for our church is that we will be one and there be no division. It is the work of Satan that tries to divide. You know, God's plan for each one of us that we should agree, have oneness of mind, oneness of heart, oneness of mission. But where is this missing? Where is it missing is we, there are very few cross-bearing Christians and very many cross-wearing Christians. It's, we should not, it's not the cross-wearing Christians. One day we'll go to heaven, but it's the cross-bearing Christians. One day we'll go to heaven. What is the proof that um, you are going to heaven, that you are a true Christian? You know, cross-centered life. You and I should have cross-centered life. Your family should have a cross-centered life. My family should have a cross-centered life. If we have that focus, there will definitely be oneness. If there is no cross-centered life, there will be no oneness. Husband and wives cannot agree on each other. Two brothers cannot agree on each other. Two sisters cannot agree on each other. And there will be quarreling all through life. And may the Lord help us that we may uh, be one in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, if somebody gets an um, ear infection, if somebody gets a strep throat, if somebody gets a bronchitis, they go to a doctor, doctor will prescribe what kind of medicine, anybody? If you go to, if you have, if you're suffering with any kind of bacterial infection, if you go to a doctor, a doctor will give you an antibiotic. What is the work of an antibiotic? An antibiotic is usually given from seven days to ten days course. And if you only take for two days, and then you just get a little better. If you stop antibiotics, do you think the entire bacteria is gone? Many do the same thing. You only take, you know, antibiotic for two days, three days, and they feel a little better, and they stop the antibiotics. The bacteria is not gone yet. When you take an antibiotic, it works against the bacteria in your body. So in the same way, we should know that we, we have a nature within us. That nature is contrary and is bringing death to us. The cross that supplied daily will bring life and life to a person. I want to read what is the source of all problems. James chapter 4. Yaakob Rasna Patrika Nalgo Ajayim. Um, James chapter 4, here if you read the 10 verses there, I'll read the 10 verses, just follow so that you'll understand what is the source of the problem. You know, what is the source of fightings in the families? What is the source of quarreling between brothers? Yenduku kotla dalakani, lagapote kutumbalo, vibedhalo, yendukostai, ane mata, yakob rasna patrika nalgo ajayan londati. The first 10 verses, let me read. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this that your passions or desires at war within you? You and I have desires and they are war within us. There is a war inside and if that war is won, you know, there will be no quarreling. Verse 2, you desire and you have not, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You see there, you have a desire and you don't get it. That's why fighting. Hebrew, you know, the, the James is saying the reason for fighting, the reason for quarreling is because of evil desire. Durashal unnandike kotlatl vastai ani devun vakyam selavistundi. Durashal unnandike potlatl vastai yuddhalu jarutai ani devun vakyam selavistundi. It's the desires inside of us that bring trouble. Look at the word of God. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly. You spend it on your own passions. 
you adulterous people do you not know the friendship with the world is enmity with god therefore whoever wishes to be the friend of the world makes himself an enemy of god or do you suppose that is it not the purpose of the scripture says he yearns with jealousy over the spirit he who dwells within you you know holy spirit dwells you know is yearning with jealousy పరిశుద్ధాత్ముడు మన శరీరాన్ని కావాలని ఆశపడుతున్నాడంట కానీ మన దురాశలు పరిశుద్ధాత్మతో పోట్లాడుతూ ఉంటాయి ద ఫ్లెష్ అండ్ స్పిరిట్ ఆర్ అగెన్స్ట్ ఈచ్ అదర్ ఐ వాంట్ యూ అండర్స్టాండ్ దిస్ అ పర్సన్ వాకింగ్ ఇన్ ఫ్లెష్ కెన్ నెవర్ వాక్ ఇన్ ద స్పిరిట్ ద పర్సన్ వాకింగ్ ఇన్ స్పిరిట్ కెన్ నెవర్ వాక్ ఇన్ ఫ్లెష్ ద స్పిరిట్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ వన్స్ అవర్ బాడీ this is why reason why quarreling read read that please or do you suppose it the for no scripture says he earns for jealousy over the spirit verse 6 he he gives more grace therefore it says god opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble in the context what is the definition of humility tagimpu ante emito akada explain chestunnanandi what is humility is the one who do not have these bad desires evil desires that kind of life is humble life and he will not fight with anybody look at what the word of god says submit therefore yourself to god and resist the devil he will flee from you draw near to god and he will draw near to you cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your heart you double minded take away the double mindedness humble yourself before the lord and he will exalt you i'll come to this passage in a minute verse 1 and verse 2 says that the fighting and quarreling comes because of evil desires there are problems in families because of desires dana peksha unnanduku iddar sahodarlu property kora kotladtarandi two brothers fight for property because they love money two sisters fight for things because they want their father's inheritance ekkada paina potladle enduku because greed greed durashalu aasha 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 enni dabbulu unna saripo enni vastulu unna saripo ఆశలు తీరవు మనిషికి కంటి ఆశ కూడా అంట చూపు ఎంత చూసినా కూడా ఆశ తీరదంట మనిషికి సామెతల గ్రంథం చెప్తుంది ఈవెన్ ఇఫ్ యూ లుక్ ఎట్ ఇట్ యు నో ఇఫ్ యూ సే ఐ వాంట్ వాచ్ సంథింగ్ ఈవెన్ ఇఫ్ యూ మే వాచ్ ఫర్ అవర్స్ యువర్ డిజైర్ విల్ నాట్ బీ క్వెన్స్డ్ విత్ ఇన్ దాట్ ఈజ్ అ లైఫ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఓల్డ్ సెల్ఫ్ పాప పాతపు పాత పాప స్వభావం ఉన్న వ్యక్తికి అలాంటి ఆశ ఉంటుంది కానీ యేసు ప్రభు దగ్గరకు వచ్చి తిరిగి జన్మించి ఆత్మతో నింపబడిన వారు ఆ పాత పాపపు స్వభావ మనిషిని చంపేస్తారండి ఆత్మ ద్వారా ఆ వ్యక్తికి ఆ పాత మనిషికి మరణం సంక్రమించాలి ఆ మరణం రావాలి సిలువేయబడాలి దట్ ఓల్డ్ సెల్ఫ్ హ్యాస్ టు బి క్రూసిఫైడ్ ఇఫ్ దట్ ఓల్డ్ సెల్ఫ్ ఈజ్ నాట్ క్రూసిఫైడ్ ద న్యూ సెల్ఫ్ వీ విల్ నాట్ హ్యావ్ విక్టరీ దెల్ బి నో వన్నెస్ యునో Jesus prayed right prayer is a solution um i just want to sh- uh, before i get into god's word i just want to share what uh, just happened last week a historical event happened last week north korea south korea north korea and south korea did not have peace for 67 years you know if somebody crosses from north korea to south korea across the border they'll be shot one soldier wanted to escape and he was shot with many wounds he entered south korea because they wanted freedom people flee to south korea in north korea there is no freedom praise god you know if you go to south korean churches if you ever go to south korea i would say in a wednesday bible study if your flight on the route to india stops in korea anna idedo bus aginattu cheptunnaru anna bus stop laga mee bus oka vela route south korea lagute udayanne prarthana prayer meeting jaruguddi prathi church lo jarugutundandi ఐదింటికి నాలుగింటికి ప్రార్థనా సర్వీస్ ఉంటుంది ప్రతి చర్చ్లో మ్యోంగ్ సాంగ్ ప్రెస్బిటేరియన్ చర్చ్ అని ఒకటి ఉంటుంది సోల్ సౌత్ కొరియా దే హ్యావ్ ఫోర్ సర్వీసెస్ ఎవ్రీ మార్నింగ్ కెన్ యూ ఎవర్ ఇమాజిన్ హ్యావింగ్ ఫోర్ ప్రేయర్ మీటింగ్స్ ఎర్లీ ఇన్ ద మార్నింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ ఫోర్ ఓ క్లాక్ ఫైవ్ ఓ క్లాక్ సిక్స్ ఓ క్లాక్ సెవెన్ ఓ క్లాక్ ఎవర్ ఇమాజిన్ చర్చ్ విల్ బీ ప్యాక్ట్ పీపుల్ నాట్ విల్ నాట్ కమ్ కెన్ ఆన్ క్యాజువల్స్ విత్ జీన్స్ ఆర్ టోన్ జీన్స్ పీపుల్ విల్ కమ్ ఇన్ సూట్స్ రెడీ యూనో డ్రెస్డ్ ఫార్మల్ దే ఆర్ సో సీరియస్ అబౌట్ ప్రేయర్ అండ్ ఎవ్రీ మార్నింగ్ యూ నో వాట్ దే ఆర్ ప్రేయింగ్ they are praying one of the request is that god would give peace between north korea and south korea and god answered after many 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 of those years that young north korean dictator that chabi man emperor nan peru what's his name king jong king jong un palagadam kuda raadu sariga 
he crossed from North Korea, South Korea, first time he crossed the border and shake hands with the president of South Korea. Ever somebody crossing, the president himself crossing. And they signed a peace treaty. It is the result of people of God praying. When church prays, God does wonders. Amen? And the Pradhana Kuna Shakti Mano Gavanin Chali, Pradinche Warilo Mano, Mana Peruguda, Undali Parlokolo. Mano Pradhin Chandukot Elisa, Prabhu Vintu Nada Leda Kurteli Chalmatku. The reason why we pray, don't pray much, is because they do not have an assurance that God is hearing. And God will answer. If you taste God answering prayers, you will get serious about prayer. When you pray, when two people agree on earth, the Lord will say, Amen. Idaru ilokolo, idari bandiste, parlokamandu, prabhu dani kevantada delisa, Amen anantada. Parlokamandu bandipa bartundi. Idaru ilokolo, deni vipudra, di parlokamandu vipu bartundi. That is the privilege that God gave church, but we need to pray. We need to get together and pray. Jesus is praying with his disciples. Even before he, was, he went to the cross, he took three of his disciples and he was praying. He was praying and they were sleeping. See that burden. You can, you can teach ten people to preach. But it is hard even to teach one person to pray. I don't know if you have tried. But have you tried teaching prayer and consistent prayer to your children? Mito Pato Karaganta Pradhan Chetam, Pilak Nerpich Surandi, Waki Nerpinch on Sulabong, Pradhan Nerpinch on Custom. You can teach, you know, you can teach two minute prayer. You teach, you know, important of fasting to your children. If you, if you show them what is importance of fasting, probably you'll say, hey, skip one meal, you know, while the kid says, I am starving, Dad. Starving and Ardundels Americans key. We don't really know what starving is. You get hungry, a little more hungry, that's it. But we don't know what starving is. We have more food in America than unimaginable. Refrigerators are full of food and our kids eat more things than what they need. But you have to teach them how to pray. Jesus was praying and the content of prayer is this, their oneness. Why is there no oneness? I'll, I'll share th quickly three reasons. First is this, lack of forgiveness. Forgiveness brings oneness in families. Forgiveness brings oneness in churches. Forgiveness brings oneness in, um, among Christians. Ephesians Patrika, letter to Ephesians, chapter 4 and verse. Let me read three verses so that you can uh, focus and listen. Ephesians Patrika, Nalgo Jam. Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 29, 30. Uh, if you put it on the screen, you'll be able to follow. Ephesians, chapter 4 and verse 29. Let no corrupt communication or talk come out of your mouth let only such as good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those he hear and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption let all bitterness wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all manners be kind to one another one another tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. If there is forgiveness in families, there will be oneness. Verse 32 says like this, be kind to one another, tender-hearted. We need kindness. We, our heart needs to be tender, forgiving, just as God forgave you in Jesus Christ. Our standard is Jesus Christ. Do you want to say Amen. Um, I've said this enough, you know, in India, passing mark is in high school, how much? 35. If you get 25, they'll say 10 more, add 10 more, and you get somehow passed. You know what is the pa passing mark here in America for the middle school or high school? Some grades it is 50s, for some grades it is 60, for some grades it is 75 is the passing grade. Why is there a difference of standard between America and India? Oh, you might say, okay, we have more people in India, that's why the standards are a little lower here. Fewer people are more stricter education, you have more standard. But I tell you, God has a standard which is 100% and no one can match that. That's why we all need grace. We all need forgiveness. We all are sinners by birth. 
మనం పుట్టుకతోనే పాపులం మన మాట మన చూపు మన క్రియ మన ఆలోచన సమస్తం కూడా పాపమే అందుకే ఈ పాపాన్ని మనం క్షమింపబడాలి సిల్వ దగ్గరకు వచ్చి ఆ క్షమాపణ పొందుకోవాలి మనం టు బిగిన్ విత్ వి ఆర్ సిలర్స్ ఇఫ్ వీ కమ్ టు ద ఫుట్ ఆఫ్ క్రాస్ అండ్ ఆస్క్ ఫర్ ఫర్ గివ్నెస్ ద లాడ్ విల్ ఫర్ గివ్ బట్ ఇఫ్ వీ రిసీవ్ దట్ ఫర్ గివ్నెస్ అండ్ వీ గో అవుట్ అండ్ ఐఎమ్ నాట్ విల్లింగ్ టు ఫర్ గివ్ మై డియర్ బ్రదర్స్ అండ్ సిస్టర్స్ వన్స్ అ పర్సన్ ఇస్ బోర్న్ అగైన్ you have the holy spirit within you parishuddhaatmudu manalo unnadu anu manam nammali parishuddhaatmudiki abhishekaniki vyathyasam ento telusa meeku parishuddhaatma prabhavam kinda unte ade abhishekam ante that is anointing the spirit of god may be in you but you may lose the anointing how can you what do you mean by lose the anointing the spirit of god will no longer guide you you know when that happens spirit of god is within you the spirit of god will not speak to you the spirit of god will not guide your life the spirit of god will not you know you will not experience god's presence when your words are hurting others many a times our words cut down others our words insult others our words you know is more of gossip slander backbiting this is when we do that you know we grieve the holy spirit look at what the word of god says verse 30 do not grieve the holy spirit of god by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption we can grieve the holy spirit he is a person he has feelings you can grieve atmanu dukkha parichakudi parishuddha atmi ela dukkha parustamo telusa ishtam ochinattu noru parichukunte itarulu meeda anavasaramaina maatlu maatladate that's how we grieve the holy spirit but if we we should make sure that you don't grieve the holy spirit if we if you grieve the holy spirit the spirit of god will no longer husbands and wives don't put down your wife you know learn to appreciate your wife may the lord fulfill that in every family of ours amen you know if you put down your own wife you are insulting your own body if you speak bad words to your wife you know you're not building her up you speak insulting words to your own children you're not building them up they will have hatred that's why I speak words that will build up manushulni divinche matla matladali ani manu manushulni manu katte matalu matladali manushulaku aashirvadakaramaina matlu matladali bharta bharyato divin divinakaramaina matlu matladali pillu kuda divinche matlu matladali నువ్వు దేనికి పనికి రావురా అన్నావు అనుకోండి పిల్లల్ని వాడికి మనసులు అదే కూర్చుంటుంది అదే మాట ఆ మనసులో హృదయంలో నాటుకొనిపోతుంది సో బీ కేర్ఫుల్ అబౌట్ వాట్ యూ స్పీక్ టు యువర్ స్పౌస్ బీ కేర్ఫుల్ అబౌట్ వాట్ యూ స్పీక్ టు యువర్ చైల్డ్ బీ కేర్ఫుల్ అబౌట్ వాట్ యూ స్పీక్ టు యువర్ బ్రదర్ వాట్ యూ స్పీక్ టు యువర్ సిస్టర్ ఇఫ్ యూ డోంట్ స్పీక్ ద వర్డ్స్ దట్ విల్ బిల్డ్ అప్ వీఆర్ యాక్చువల్లీ టేరింగ్ ఇట్ డౌన్ అండ్ వీ గ్రీవ్ ద హోలీ స్పిరిట్ and that's where is the, that's where are the problems of unforgiveness so you might say oh come on you don't know um what you're talking about you know the the problems that we are facing i cannot forgive the person you know why we can't forgive the person is we never do not look at the cross continuously if you look at the cross if you have a cross centered life you will learn to forgive peter came and asked the lord one question gospel according to matthew chapter 18 you know that is the story we have read peter asked the lord jesus one question how long should i forgive my brother matthew chapter 18 um the lord tells a nice story um verse 21 peter came up and said lord how often will my brother sin against me and i forgive him as many as seven times jesus said i do not say seven i do not say to you seven times but 70 times seven i was sharing the word once like this and i asked who is the one who sinned against you the most there was one brother who was sitting with his wife next and he said my wife is the one who sins against me the most anadata so whom do you need to forgive the most ante na bharya andi anadata endukandi ani adigana anadata because she is the one who makes me upset the very first year lone 490 ayipoyina anadata if you keep on counting so if you keep a count of how many times you forgive your friend Okay, if you keep on counting how many times you forgive your child. How many of you really keep a count of how many times you forgive you, your child? How many, how many of you do that? None of us do, right? If you say, Daddy, I'm sorry, 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 I'
ఎన్నిసార్లు అయినా క్షమిస్తావు కానీ ఇతరులు మాత్రం అలాంటి క్షమించే గుణం మనకు ఉండదు ఎందుకో తెలుసా వీ డోంట్ లుక్ యాట్ వాట్ వీ వాట్ జీఎస్ హ్యాస్ స్టాండ్ ఫర్ అస్ జీఎస్ టోల్డ్ అ స్టోరీ జీఎస్ టోల్డ్ అస్ నైస్ ప్యారబుల్ టు ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ దిస్ అండ్ లెట్ మీ లుక్ యాట్ టెల్ యూ వాట్ ద స్టోరీ ఈస్ లిసన్ కేర్ఫుల్లీ ప్లీజ్ ఇట్ సీమ్స్ దర్ వాజ్ అ కింగ్ ఒక రాజు ఉన్నాడు అంట and one servant came to the king and and then the, the king asked we need to settle accounts and that servant owed that that king 10000 talents look at what the word of god says verse 24 he owed him 10000 talents a talent is 20 years worth of wages average salary american average salary and to chapandi $40,000, $50,000, $50,000 average salary. Okay, 50,000 times 10. I am going to do math in the middle of the day. Huh? 500,000 times 2, 1 million dollars. It is like somebody owing the king a million dollars. And they come to the king and the king forgives them a million dollars. He goes out. He falls on his feet and then say, Lord, for, for, uh, forgive me. You know what the king says? Why don't you sell this man and sell, oh, sell the whole family into slavery and get the money? The king forgives him. He goes out and finds one person who owed him 100 denarii, like 100 days, denarii is a one day's worth of wage. Even if you think one day's worth of wage is $100, 100 times 100 is how much? 100 times 100 is $10,000. Where is a million dollars? Where is the $10,000? He goes and chokes him and says, I will not forgive you until you pay the $10,000 and puts him in jail. Somebody report that to the king. You know, king calls that servant and says, I forgave you a million dollars. I forgave you 10,000 talents. And you took somebody who owes only $10,000 and put him in jail. And then the king says, and the master summoned him and said, you wicked servant, I forgive you all the debt because you pleaded with me. And should you not have mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had mercy on you? And in anger, that master delivered him to jailers until he should pay all his debt. Verse 34. And the last word says like this. So also Heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from the heart. The Lord wants us to forgive everyone from our heart. If you only say, you don't know the common objection for not forgiving people is this. You don't know what the person has done to me. But I tell you, you don't know how much you sin against the Lord. If we consider, you know, you know, always remember this, please. Sin is a debt that we owe to God. What we owe to God is much, it's like 10,000 talents. What others owe to us is like 100 denarii. Nothing compared. How people, Manu Devani Yaduta, Ekuka Papun Chestama, Itharlo Manadrushlo, Manaku Virodanga Papu Eku Chestara. Just like the bro- that brother said, the one said, the sins against me the most is my wife. He said, because she offends me the most. But you have learned to forgive your wife. My dear brothers and sisters, always let cross be the center of your family. Let cross be the center of every relationship. Among two brothers, two sisters, wife and husband, parents and children. Sad thing. Many brothers do not talk to each other. Many sisters do not talk to each other for property's sake. Many parents and children will not talk to each other for money's sake. They are not living a cross-centered life. If cross is in the center, you look at how much you owe Jesus. He paid all your sin. He forgave all your debt. And will you not forgive others? You know what? Nik shaminchana, nik shaminchana. Ante devudu ninnu shaminchana. What do you know? We have to say that 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 
ఇతరులకు నువ్వు కృప చూపకపోతే ప్రభు నీ కృప చూపడు ఇఫ్ బ్లెస్డ్ ఆర్ ద మర్సిఫుల్ ఫర్ దే షాల్ రిసీవ్ మర్సీ ఓన్లీ దోసు ఫర్ గివ్ విల్ రిసీవ్ ఫర్ గివ్నెస్ ఫర్ వన్నెస్ వైఫ్ అండ్ హస్బెండ్ లెట్ దేర్ బీ వన్నెస్ ఇన్ ఎవ్రీ ఫ్యామిలీ లెర్న్ టు ఫర్ గివ్ ఇఫ్ దెర్ ఈస్ ఫర్ గివ్నెస్ you know heart hardened sin hardens the heart when your heart is tender you will be willing to forgive those wonderful words i want to read ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 mark that and if you can memorize that verse that's a wonderful verse um, which talks about what kind of a heart we should have ephesians 4 32 says like this be kind to one another kindness kindness that should be shown in our words in our thoughts and actions be tender hearted we are not tender if you count other sins the lord will count your sins be careful learn to forgive others may the lord help us forgive so you might say i have hard time uh, let me ask you one question if somebody hurts you every time you see that person will that hurt pop up in your mind yes or no you know we can both say kuna matladu prashna ladutadu endukandi madhyalo ninne varana matlante ఆ వ్యక్తిని చూడగానే ఆ మాట గుర్తొస్తుందా లేదా ఎస్ సార్ నో దెన్ హౌ విల్ యూ రియలీ గెట్ రిడ్ ఆఫ్ దాట్ ఇఫ్ యూ లుక్ ఎట్ దట్ పర్సన్ యూ ఓ ఐఎమ్ ఐఎమ్ రిమైండెడ్ ఆఫ్ ఇట్స్ అగైన్ అండ్ అగైన్ యూ స్టార్ట్ ప్రేయింగ్ అబౌట్ దట్ పర్సన్ యూ నో వాట్ హ్యాపెన్స్ యూ విల్ డూ అ బ్లెస్సింగ్ టు యువర్ సెల్ఫ్ అండ్ యూ స్టార్ట్ ప్రేయింగ్ అబౌట్ దట్ పర్సన్ దట్ వూండ్ ఈస్ యూ నో ద హర్ట్ దట్ యూ హ్యావ్ ఇస్ అ వూండ్ నీలో గాయం ఉంది ఈ గాయం ఎలా మానిపోద్దు తెలుసా నువ్వు ప్రార్థన చేస్తే ఈ గాయం మానిపోద్దు ఆ వ్యక్తి కొరకు నువ్వు ప్రార్థన చేయడం మొదలు పెట్టాలి ఎవ్రీ టైమ్ యూ సీ ద పర్సన్ స్టార్ట్ ప్రేయింగ్ అబౌట్ ద పర్సన్ ఎవ్రీ టైమ్ యూ సీ ద పర్సన్ సే లాడ్ ఐ ఫర్ గివ్ దట్ పర్సన్ దెన్ యూ విల్ హ్యావ్ అ క్లీన్ హార్ట్ హీ ఆర్ షీ మే నాట్ ఫర్ గివ్ దే విల్ స్టాండ్ బిఫోర్ ద లాడ్ వన్ డే బట్ యువర్ హార్ట్ విల్ బీ క్లీన్ ఆన్ ద జడ్జ్మెంట్ డే యూ విల్ బీ ఫర్ గివెన్ దే విల్ నాట్ బీ ఫర్ గివెన్ ఇఫ్ ద డోంట్ ఫర్ గివ్ స్టార్ట్ ప్రేయింగ్ అబౌట్ ద పర్సన్ నాట్ ఓన్లీ స్టార్ట్ ప్రేయింగ్ అబౌట్ ద పర్సన్ స్టార్ట్ టు బ్లెస్ ద పర్సన్ then many a times what we do is this we want to take vengeance avengers ana kotta move vachindandi avengers you pillal andar they are talking about avengers 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 don't avenge yourself we are not avengers do you want to say amen we are not avengers you know who avengers are avengers are the ones who will take vengeance if somebody did i na kid chesadu nenu ayana kad chestanu than na kid chesindi భార్య భర్తలు కూడా వాళ్ళు చేసుకుంటారండి చాలా మటుకు రోమన్స్ చాప్టర్ ట్వెల్వ్ క్విక్లీ ప్లీజ్ రోమన్స్ చాప్టర్ ట్వెల్వ్ వర్స్ నైన్టీన్ డోంట్ బీ అవెంజర్స్ ప్లీజ్ లెట్ ద లెట్ జీసస్ అవెంజ్ పీపుల్ రోమన్స్ చాప్టర్ ట్వెల్వ్ అండ్ దెన్ వర్స్ ఎయిటీన్ నైన్టీన్ ట్వంటీ ఇఫ్ పాసిబుల్ యాజ్ ఫార్ యాజ్ ఎ డిపెండ్స్ అపాన్ యూ లివ్ పీసిబుల్ విత్ ఆల్ పీపుల్ లివ్ ఎట్ పీస్ విత్ ఎవ్రీబాడీ బట్ విత్ సంబడి ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ పాసిబుల్ బికాస్ ఇఫ్ ది అదర్ పర్సన్ డజన్ వాంట్ టు బీ పీస్ఫుల్ ఇట్స్ నాట్ పాసిబుల్ బట్ యూ ట్రై యువర్ బెస్ట్ you know as far as it depends on you be be at peace with everyone and then he says beloved never avenge yourself meaning do not be an avenger bill but leave it to the wrath of god for it is vengeance it is written vengeance is mine i will repay the lord you know who will repay jesus will repay instead of taking the law into your own hands instead of taking judgment into your hands leave the judgment to the lord let him repay Oh, you might say a lot of things. No, you don't know what they have done to me. That's why I want to repay. I'll let you say, 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 you take a gun and shoot that person, will you be arrested yes or no please the law does not give a right to a common citizen to take law into his hands his own hands if you see some wrong happening what should you do call the authorities call the police they will come and arrest don't take the law into your own hands but when it comes to personal matters we'll take the law into our own hands you'll become a judge for your own wife you'll become a judge for your own husband you become a judge for your own children and say nuvi pan chestava nen je em chestana chudu paga padtarandi manushulu paga batte varni prabhu kshaminchadu 
ఆ మాట గుర్తుపెట్టుకోండి ప్లీజ్ ఇఫ్ యూ హ్యావ్ అన్ఫర్గివ్నెస్ రాత్ ద లాడ్ విల్ నాట్ ఫర్గివ్ యూ లీవ్ ఇట్ టు ద లాడ్ సి ఇఫ్ యూ ఇఫ్ యూ స్ట్రైక్ అ బ్లో ఇన్ ఓల్డ్ టెస్ట్మెంట్ డేవిడ్ ప్రేడ్ సమ్ సిల్లీ ప్రేయర్స్ కొన్ని పిచ్చి ప్రార్థనలు చేశాడు దావిద్ ప్రభు వాడి పళ్ళు రాలగొట్టు అని ప్రార్థన చేశాడు అట్లా ప్రార్థన చేసేవాళ్ళు ఉంటారా ఎస్ సార్ నో ఏం చెప్పారు నేను ఎలాంటి ప్రార్థన చేయను అంటున్నారేమో ఒకవేళ పళ్ళు రాలగొట్టమని మీరు ప్రార్థన చేస్తే దేవుడు ఆన్సర్ చేస్తాడా ఎస్ సార్ నో ఎందుకు ఎందుకంటే అది దేవుని హృదయం కాదు కనుక అది దేవుని చిత్తం కాదు కనుక on the jesus was you know if you pray lord why don't you break that man's leg this fellow's leg my child's leg the lord will not break somebody's leg the lord is lord why don't you put this fellow in accident and teach him a lesson the lord will not do it that's a foolish silly prayers stop praying like that leave it to him he will judge the lord is being crucified you know what lord jesus said father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing who was jesus praying about Jesus was praying about the Pharisees, the scribes, the soldiers, you know, the pilot, all these people who handed him over to the cross. There will be oneness in the family when husband and wife will forgive each other. There will be oneness in the family when the parents and children learn to forgive each other. There will be, you know, oneness in the family when two brothers learn to forgive each other, two sisters will learn to forgive each other. May the Lord give us that kind of heart to forgive. Do you want to say amen? You know, Graham Staines. with his two sons who were burnt alive in the state of Orissa Graham Staines came from Australia to to serve among lepers if you know the ministry of Graham Staines you'll be shocked Graham Staines planted many churches you know where they worship they worship under the trees aaradhan cheyatanku oka building ledandi alli chetla kinda aaradhan chestaru ఆస్ట్రేలియా నుంచి సమస్తం సమర్పించుకొని వచ్చి సేవ చేసే వ్యక్తిని వన్ ఫెలో వన్ రెడ్ కీలెం దేర్ ఇన్ ద జీప్ హీ బర్న్ట్ అండ్ ద క్రామ్ స్టేన్స్ అండ్ హిస్ టూ సన్స్ వర్ బర్న్ట్ అ లైఫ్ దే వర్ డెడ్ యు నో హిస్ వైఫ్ ఎనీబడి టెల్ మీ హిస్ వైఫ్స్ నేమ్ వీ డోంట్ నో గ్లాడ్ స్టైన్స్ they asked do you have do you have a grudge do you want to go back to australia she stayed back and she served a recent day she went back to australia for a different reason but she stayed for many years 1999 that missionary was burnt alive his wife stayed back his wife was not threatened he can only take my life but my lord is watching he's able to protect but she said i will forgive them who killed my husband i will forgive them who killed my children can you ever imagine as somebody killing husband and two sons and a wife for giving them that is the heart of jesus may the lord give us that kind of heart willing to forgive anybody do you want to say amen then every family will have peace every family will have oneness unforgiveness leads to quarrels unnecessary divisions it is the work of satan we need to learn to forgive quickly secondly um philippians the in 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 the church of philippi there are two sisters or you might say what are their names turn with me please uh, philippians chapter 4 these two sisters names are mentioned these two, two sisters cannot get along you know that's a problem uh, philippians chapter 4 uh, paul is writing this letter and he's saying hey remember i remember these two sisters in your church he came you know in very uh, in this city of philippi the story is recorded in acts chapter 16 jesus comes to, uh, sorry paul comes to the city of philippi and he first speaks in a women's meeting streelo meeting lo apostle ana paul matladutunnadandi ludia ana stri rakshimpa padadi atla sangham start ayindandi that's how the church started paul started speaking in a women's meeting and one woman called lydia receives christ and her household is saved and that's how the church begins when the church begins but this church has a problem the two women cannot get along with each other philippians chapter 4 look at what the word of god says verse 2 i entreat you o dear i entreat syntyche to agree in the lord yes i ask you true companion help these women who labored side by side they have a heart to serve god but no agreement you see the point and then 
Oh, with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of the fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. And then he says rejoice. He says there is no agreement between these two women. Tell these women to agree. And in the context, you know when, when the letters were written, when the Bible was written, there were no chapters and there were no verse numbers. That was added in the 16th century. Right uh, after the King James was translated, then that's when the verse numbers, chapter numbers are added. When the original letters, letters of Philipp, Philippians was written, there were no chapter numbers, there were no verse numbers. That was added for our own uh, division's sake, for our own memorization's sake. But in the original, there is no chapter or verse number. So how can we overcome this in the context? Go back to chapter 2, please. Chapter 2, verse 3. You know, how... What is really humility? Humility brings oneness. Verse, verse 3, uh, verse 2, sorry. Do nothing out of rivalry and conceit. But in humility, count others more significant than yours. If you are humble, you will consider others as a better person. Remember that, please. The mark of humility is you consider others better than you. Secondly, verse 4. Let each other look not only at your own interests, but also the interests of others. The mark that you are humble is that you look at the interest of others. You are humble. The third one is this. Look at verse 4. Let each one of you look at not only his interest but also the interest of others. Have this mind among yourself which is in Christ Jesus. The mind of Jesus is a humble mind. Oh, how can I get the mind of Jesus? You might say, I want to have the mind of Jesus. You know, I said, I said, Jesus is the standard for us. Not 35, not 50, not 70, 100%. Life of Jesus is our standard. As Jesus forgave, we should forgive. Now, as Jesus humbled, we should humble ourselves. Christ tannu tannu taggin chukuna tu mana taggin chukuali. Yala taggin chukuna tu what is humility. Taggin pante into definition of Christ tannu tannu. Philippians chapter 2 and then verse 8 is, gives the, um, the first, you know, I, I've said these, I want you to mark these four things. Firstly is this, the mark of humility is you count others better than you. Verse 3. The mark of humility is this, you look at others' interests more than yours. That is the second mark of humility. The third mark of humility is, verse 7, you, you count yourself nothing. You made himself nothing. Meaning he, he emptied himself, one translation. Another translation says, he made himself nothing. Even though he was in the form of God. He took the form of a man. He took the form of a slave. Even though he was in a morphos, theos, meaning he was in the form of God. He took a morphos anthropos in Greek, meaning he took the form of a man. Then he says morphos of doulos, meaning the form of a slave. Dasuni rupamanta. Dasunanta in India servant and kuntam. It's not the servant. He became a slave, bond servant. He took that kind of a form. The mark of humility is you do not count, you know, you don't know how, what kind of education I have. That means you're not humble. You are counting your education. You know, you don't know what kind of bank balance I have. I have more money than that fellow. That means you are not humble. You are taking pride in your education. You are taking pride in your money. You are taking pride in, you know, in your status. You are taking pride in, in, in the place of your birth. You are taking pride in the color of your skin. Somebody is more, you know, fairer looking or handsome looking or beautiful looking. They have more pride in them. So counting, oh, I'm better than somebody. If you think I'm better than somebody, you're not humble, please. Say, no, 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 I'm not worthy. If you think like that. You know, humility is not just putting your head down and saying yes for everything. What is really humility? Look at verse 8. Say, here it says, the fourth mark of humility is this. And being found in a human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient. Obedience is the true mark of humility. Miku tapgimpu undi ani ruju enta telusa miku devuni yadra vidayatu na pre miku tapgimpu na tu devuni yedi chapter na chastan ani manusu miku unte Christ manusu miku na tu lai potale na tu Christ kali na yee manusu milo unda ni vadi enta Christ kali na manusu enta telusa tapgimpu ani manusu 
humble mind. May God give us a humble mind that we are willing to do whatever the Father says. You know, what is really humility? I want to give two definitions. I want you to write down, please, these two. Um, James chapter 4 again and verse 10. We have read that verse and let's come to James. Um, I'll give two verses about what really humility is. We have to check yourself, whether I'm humble or not, whether I'm proud. You know, if you don't see, oh, if you are think that you are humble, if I think that I'm humble, when I'm not humble, I'm deceiving myself. Um, James chapter 4 and verse 10. Humble yourself before the Lord. He will exalt you. You know, humility is a posture of heart before God. Humility is the heart attitude before God. And do not speak evil of one another, brothers. The one who speaks against your brother judges his brother. That is that he says that he doesn't have humility. If you talk evil about your, your brothers and sisters, that means you're not humble at all. This is what the word of God says. Um, and then uh, you're a lawgiver. Humility is an attitude of heart before God. First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5 also says the same thing, but in a, in a different context. But I want you to look at that place. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 5 and 6. Likewise, you who are younger, subject to the elders... Clothe yourself, all of you, um, with humility towards one another. Taggimpane vastrani darin skovalanta. Clothe yourself as if we put on clothes. We just have to put humility and then God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. If a proud person is there, God becomes automatically his enemy. Garvistiki devudu virodai potatendi. Yorikaita taggimpane pravuvarni hechistadu. Then what really is uh, humility? If you come to verse um, 6. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. So that at the proper time he will exalt you. Oh, I've been doing what is right in God's presence, but I don't get the uh, promotion, exaltation. My dear brothers and sisters, even if you have a, a spouse who is hard to love, you should still love. Do you want to say Amen. I should obey me. You know, I was like a fool like that. I've been married for 20 years. When I was married young, I, I used to use all kinds of bad language against my wife. But God has to teach me. God has to correct me. God has to change me. Then instead of speaking, you know, uh, putting her down all the time, God has to change me so that I can honor my wife. I can build up my wife. You know, learn to speak, you know, honor. So where does it say? Oh, you, you don't know what kind of a boss I have. How can I humble myself when I have a bad boss? I'll give you two verses. I want you to look at this, please. First Peter chapter 3. You're just, uh, chapter 5, right? Just go back to two chapters. If you have even a bad boss, I will, I will share, share those two verses. A good Christian will be a good citizen, please. Remember this, please. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. First Peter chapter 3 verse 7, likewise husbands live with your wives in an understanding way, uh, showing honor to women as a weaker vessel. You have to show honor to your wives, says the word of God, since they are heirs with you in the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. If you don't show honor to your wife, your prayer will not be answered, men. The same, same goes for women too. Sisters, if you don't submit to your husband, you know, your prayers will not be answered. Brothers, if you don't treat your wife with honor, your prayer will not be answered. Many, many a times the Bible says that. Learn to honor your spouse. God will definitely answer your prayer. Look at next verse. This is very important. Very wonderful verse. If you want, can um, read it, memorize it. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 8. Finally, all of you have unity of mind. Sympathy. Brotherly love. Tender heart and a humble mind. Paul spoke that to Philippian church. Peter is saying this to same, you know, uh, dispersed Christians. He says, unity of mind, meaning oneness, and then sympathy. You don't even have sympathy. 
against those who are suffering, we should have sympathy. And then brotherly love, tender heart. May God give us tender heart. Do you want to say amen? The same tender heart Paul spoke in Ephesians 4. The same tender heart Peter is talking about to the Christians in 1 Peter chapter 3. May God give us tender heart. And there he says, a humble mind. Humility is a posture of the heart before God. Lord, I'm here to do what your word says. Or you might say, I have a hard boss, a boss that will treat me bad. You know, many bosses will have favorites. If a boss has a favorite, he will give less work to his favorite and promotion to his favorite. If a boss doesn't like somebody, he'll give him more work or give her more work and doesn't give her the pay raise. You see there, favoritism happens at families. Favoritism happens in families, in, with, with many children. Favoritism happens with, you know, at workplace. Favoritism happens in a classroom with a teacher or professor. Favoritism happens at workplace. How do you deal with an unjust boss? Look at what the word of God says. First Peter chapter 2. Importantly, my boss is hard on me. What should I do? You know, should I submit? Alanti boss ko nenu taginsko ni nenu submit chesko ala ala putirgubad se ala. Vakyun surandi. First Peter chapter 2 and then um, verse 18. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect. You employees, submit to your bosses. This is what the word of God says. With all respect, verse 18. Not only to the good ones and gentle ones, but also to the unjust ones. In the past, I have been told that Peter Peter entered. When you have an unjust boss, still submit to that kind of person. That's what Peter is saying. Because God is the one who is one day will lift you up. Do you want to say amen? Your boss may not recognize you. But the Lord sees your hard work. Your boss may show favoritism to you. But the Lord will lift you up. The boss may ignore you. But we have a greater boss who is watching over all things. And when he lifts, no man can stop. Amen? When God wants to lift you, if God wants to give you a promotion, nobody will be able to stop. Nobody will be able to stop. Think about Joseph. He was in jail for what he has not done. He is doing good, but nobody is doing good to him. But he still remained faithful. He only got bad for the good he did. Was God not watching? God was testing him. God lifted up Joseph to be a prince of Egypt next to Pharaoh. Because exaltation comes from God alone. Do you want to say amen? If God lifts you up, nobody can do anything to you. Prabhu Mimal Nihachiste, Nik Adduga Yedrukune Vyakte Undadandi. You know what Potiphar says when Joseph becomes the prince? Potiphar says, remember me. His boss is saying, hey, you become big boss. Please remember me now. You see what the Lord, when the Lord does, when you humble yourself. And families will have unity. Workplace will have unity. Brothers will have unity. Sisters will have unity. When you learn to be humble. Lastly, I will close with this. Ephesians chapter 5. You know, how Jesus humbled. That's why we need to humble. Jesus is our standard. And that kind of life... We have to live. Christ wale mano jivin salane de mana deyam mana mana goal ayundal mana guriga kali yundal mano. Christ lag mano jivin salan mana kashle apote mano vodi poyna varanga untam. Ephesi patrika ido jam. Ephesians chapter five. And unity in the family comes because of love and respect. Many families without love. Many families without respect. And here, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20, we have read this. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Oh, if he behaves like the Lord, I will submit to him. Women may complain. Prabhu vale tama santa purushilaku lopada vannada. And Prabhu laga pravartiste nen lopada nandi. Anta varak nen lopada nandi. Anta varaku nen karadishkan baadta nandi. O kama per shantamma nandanta. Bartane baade nandanta papamaya. Okamapir Krupamanta Kani Bartare Pargetichedanta 
Our name may say, you may have Shantama, but there is no Shanta inside. There's no peace. Your name may say peace, but if you don't have peace, there is vain. You may say, your name may be grace, but if you don't have grace in your talk or work, it is waste. That is, our life should display. As to the Lord, wife should submit to the husband. Not if he becomes like, behaves like Lord. There's no condition there. Many a times this passage is used in marriages. And say, wife, submit to your husband as to the Lord. Because the husband is the head. Immediately, wife winner. Let him be the head, I am the neck. I will turn him wherever I want him. Let him be the head and I am the neck. I can turn him wherever I want. No big deal, said the woman. That's not the attitude we should have. As unto the Lord, that husband, wife should submit to her husband. And then, an important and even more higher standard is for men. That higher standard is this. For the husband is the head of the wife, verse 23. For Christ is the head of the church, his body, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Tanu tanu sanghani koraku Christ apaginsukuna tu bartalara me bahariyalnu ala preminchandi antar. Christ is the standard. A husband has to love his wife like how Jesus loved and died for the sake of church. To save church. To save your wife, you should be willing to the point of laying down your life. That's what love is. I've said many a times, the definition of love is willingness to lay down your life. Pranam petatani ki siddhanga unde vade nijamayana premi kudandi. Nijamayana prema ante pranam petti nantaga premi nstavana. Your willingness to lay down your life, that is what love is. A husband should be willing to lay down his life to save his wife. That's how, are you really concerned about your wife like that? Then there is, if you don't, if you do not have that, you really don't love your wife. Husbands, love your wife. And not just saying, I love you, but meaning it, saying, you know, think about her interests, think about her, what she's going through, think about her trials, think about her problems, think about what she's going through, and be willing to take care of those needs. Husband is the provider of the house, husband is the protector of the house, husband is the, you know, the priest of the house, husband is the pastor of the house. So every husband has that responsibility. Not only that, he, the husband has to, you know, there, what the Lord does, verse 26, we'll close with that, that he might sanctify her by cleansing her by the washing of the water. Devuni vakyam to udhagasnanam cheistaranda sanghani, Christu. So washing by the water, the water of God's word. You know, husband is so concerned about his wife that he teaches her the word of God. Husband is the primary teacher. The dad is the primary teacher of the family. You know, many a times, a lot of times we, we say, oh, we go to that church because there is a good Sunday school there. I'll tell you, don't go to a church because of Sunday school. You know why? God asks dad the responsibility in heaven, not the church Sunday school. And I'm not saying, sir, you should not have Sunday school ministry. But the primary responsibility of teaching the children is upon a dad. Remember this, please. Lord, we went to the church. They taught, I don't know, we taught the church responsibility of teaching the Sunday school. We taught the church responsibility was taking care of the youth program. But the Lord says, no, no, no. It is your responsibility, you father. You have to take care of your sons. You have to take care of your daughters. The primary responsibility of teaching the word of God to a spouse, to a wife, is not a women's meeting. Is not a Bible study. It is the husband's responsibility to make sure your wife understands the word of God. So if you don't read, if you don't study, if you don't ask the Lord, Lord, teach me, how will you be able to teach to your spouse? So husbands, Christ tawa guruhum yala undala telsa, bartha devuni vakya ni bodhin chewaadi ka undali, bartha kapari ka undali, bartha vakya ni bodhin chewaadi ka undali. Adi Christ, nijamayana Christ tawa kutumu vante. If the husbands don't learn the word of God, if the husbands don't teach to the wife and teach to their children, you know, we are just saying, okay, ignorant. You know, oh, you want a double zampa this tanaga, double itches tanaga, dinibar tanaga, inte. Ante, I'm taking care of the food needs. You know, what the many tragedies of many families that we have seen was the father goes to a different country just to earn more money. 
and the wife and kids are left there for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, not just for a little time. And we ask, hey, what happened? He says, oh, the husband is doing an important work of sending more money. I'll tell you, your children do not need more money. Your children need a father, and they need more father's presence and help. Do you want to say amen? Bartal Deradushan, Duradushan, Law, and Double Sampanch Pompishna, Mukhyan Gadandi. Yanta Chinna Uddogan, Jujogan Chesina, Double Sampaditsa Poyna. Kunchame Unna, Tandri Akutumolo Undari. If you see many families, there are fatherless families where there is no care for the children, where nobody cares for the wife. My dear brothers and sisters, I have seen many families divided like that, my own relatives and my own relatives. One, my, one of my own relatives went off to a foreign country leaving his wife and children and he stayed there for 25 years. His wife and kids stayed away and when, you know, after 25 years he took a retirement and came back to India and then his, his kids do not have an attachment. He sent them money. But there are no attachment. You know, families need fathers. Men are very important. If children grow up without fathers, that will be a tragedy. That's why it is very hard for single moms to raise children. If you know any single mom, you know, I tell you, my dear brothers, men, please go help those families. You be the, you know, you be like a brother to that, you know, single mom and say, I will be like a mama who, for the children who will help and teach the word of God and help that. That is a true ministry. If you find a single mom struggling with kids, please help that kind of a family. Because that is true ministry because fathers are needed. Fathers are not just needed for protection's sake. Fathers are needed that they will learn how to behave from a father. You know, if you have a son... When he grows up, he gets married, he will treat his wife just like how you treat your wife. If you have a daughter, when she grows up and when she gets married, she will treat her husband exactly how the wife of the house treats her husband. Immortal Marchipod, please. Me Kumarudu Pedagai or Pedlaite, Tanabari and Allah treat just that, Alisa? No, no, Bari and treat just not treat just that. No matlade matlade vada matlade tada. Naap ko metko ndi. Mee kumar talu nte. Walu pedla in tarvata. Walu yala pravarthi star tila sa walu barthalu to. Thalli intlo thandri yala asar maan istundo. Walu kuda walu pedla ni alage chastar. Walu kutum walu ade chastar. So remember please. We exemplify the love of Christ in the family. Fathers, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Wives, submit your husbands as unto the Lord. The Christian gospel is lived out in a Christian family. Do you want to say amen? May every man love his wife. May every wife submit to her husband. May the children see that. And it will be a blessed home. There will be unity. There will be oneness. Let the children see the oneness between the dad and mom. Thalidhan rulak aiketa ledan kundi. Pilala dechu star. Alage wal gudu jeev star. Wala kutumba jeev tam kuda alage ondani. You are building generations. You, will, you are building generations. What you really sow, that's what you will reap. Meri denni vittu taro adhane kos tarandi. That's why with wisdom so, women, you know, a wise woman buildeth her house. Sisters, build your homes with love, with respect. The way you treat your house, treat your husband, the way you treat your children. Brothers, the way you treat your spouse, with love, with respect, with honor, they will learn. You know where boys will learn respect for girls? In a family. If a boy has older sisters or younger sisters, boys will become gentle. And they will learn how to be gentle with their spouse when they grow up. If they, otherwise, they don't. They'll become rude. If they don't have sisters and they have not dealt you know, gently with, with, uh, with mom, if they have not learned gentleness from mom, if there are only boys at home, in my house, there are only two boys and my mom. But my mom made sure that we love gentleness at home. You teach gentleness to your sons. 
So when they grow up, they will know how to treat women. This is a big issue in India now. If you, if you just look at the news in India, every man would treat a woman like, like an object. Please, we need to, as Christians, we should see women as Jesus saw women. Do you want to say amen? Jesus respected women. The first person to whom Jesus appeared after his resurrection was a woman. He respected. He did not put them aside. He did not, you know, put them as second class citizens. Or people whom, that's why I learned to respect women. Show respect. And then may the Lord make our families like that. We have daughters. They are precious. Make sure you respect them. Make sure you love them. Make sure you teach them respect. And that's what they'll do. Teach your sons to do the same. May the Lord make our families like that. That's when there will be joy, there will be peace, there will be oneness in the family. The prayer that Jesus prayed, let them be one as we are one. I want to remind those three things, please. Firstly, is learn to forgive others. Husbands and wives, forgive. Don't sleep without forgiving your spouse. Don't go to bed without forgiving your spouse or your children. Don't say, I will not forgive you. Second, humble yourself. Humility will bring oneness. Thirdly, love and respect and honor will bring oneness in families. That is the life that Jesus expects from each one of us. Shall we bow? If you have people whom you have not forgiven,